I'm just going to do a really quick intro and pass it on to the real expert here. Um, so I'm Quentin Porter. I'm the Director of Business Development and Partnerships for Zoomf. Um, it's really actually a really big pleasure for me to be here. This is quite different for me. I spent um, the last, or I guess seven years prior to the last four years, which I've been with Zoom uh, for four years, but spent uh, seven years as a professional football player, American football, um, as a quarterback in the NFL and in the CFL. Um, so it's been a really interesting transition in being a part of Zoom, but really the big thing I took away from my playing career that's really helped me here with Zoom and sort of motivated me is the the really the importance in an engaged audience and an engaged fan base. It's critical and as a player, whether it was my team or some of the teams we were playing against, it was a game changer. Um, so we've, I guess I also realized the challenges that are faced trying to engage those people, um, especially in this like hyper digital, fast paced age where there's so many distractions. And so that's where Zoom comes in and that's kind of the problem we're solving and that Thomas will be talking to you about. Um, so Zoom actually started as an R&D project for various US foreign policy initiatives, which is kind of interesting, so sort of the government sector. And a lot of really kind of high-tech software came as a result, and then it was, you know, kind of became the platform that we took to market about four or five years ago. Um, so actually, can you click to the next slide? So actually now we work with some of the sort of most forward-thinking brands and teams in the world, and it's really uh, amazing to be a part of it. And we're really addressing kind of three key things for them. Uh, one of them is consumer insights and analytics. So really deep insight into your audience. Um, the second is improving or enhancing web and in-venue digital uh, experiences and engagement. Um, the third would be, you know, um, what is the third? Because it's really those are the two big two. But I guess, yeah, so content strategy. We're not actually, you know, producing content necessarily in Zoom, but the analytics we get from it really do inform a content strategy and help you amplify your content. So uh, hopefully if you guys get a chance to stop by the booth, I'd love to connect with as many of you as possible, whether we're just learning something or you're learning something about Zoom. But there's, um, there's a, a lot of really good information here that we have in our platform, but we're not going to pitch the platform. We're going to share Thomas's expertise on data. So let's pass it over to Thomas. You got your thing? Well, thank you, Quentin. Yeah. Let's get this out of the way. Get my big body out of the way. Uh, so first of all, um, if any of you would like to catch a Nerf ball thrown by a former <laughs> quarterback, do swing by our booth. Quinton has got a very strong arm that I'm sure will, will give a nice challenge. So uh, very excited to be here. This is my first time in Soccer X. It's also my first time in Manchester, so definitely want to see the city as well. Uh, quick introduction uh, about myself. I've been in big data projects for about 20 years. I started my career in corporate banking and then later uh, focused on financial on, uh, on the stock market, like big data challenges around that. But for the most recent part, uh, what's been keeping me up at night is how do we take unstructured data signals to solve the problem of data personalization for audiences like your fans, your consumers, et cetera. So we are an age of digital. We are also in an age of digital distraction. Like in the one second this light has been up, this is what's been passed around both from an Instagram, from a social standpoint, from an email standpoint, from a video viewing standpoint. There's so much activity going on. Personally, I'm on registered on five social networks. I'm active on three. I've got two email addresses, and that's kind of the median per profile of people on social and in digital today. So with so much digital distraction happening, what's going to make your brand stand out? Why is your team going to get the attention of a football fan? So just think about this as the noisy bar down the street, and you want the best digital pickup line to get engagement. What's that pickup line going to be? And uh, it comes down to two things. The first thing is relevance. How do you generate content that's relevant for your audience? The second thing is timeliness. How do you know the right time to push that content to get the attention of the fan as well? So
So the modern CMO and the modern digital strategists really care about taking that relevant, timely content to do two things. They want to drive positive fan experiences, and they're going to do that by creating frictionless, frictionless experiences. They also want to be anticipatory towards the modern fan. And by doing that, they're creating a very positive fan experience, which is driving loyalty up. And in order to do that goal of being frictionless and anticipatory, you really need to be in sync with the behaviors and preferences of the fan. You need to know exactly what do they care about, what are they about. And without that, you're really shooting in the dark. The problem and the obstacle that's up today is that traditional ways of getting consumer insights are based on pixel tracking. They're based on panel-based tracking, which is all about clicks. It's not about people. If you truly want to understand the fans behind your team, you have to put a face on your first-party data. What does it mean, put a face on your first-party data? Think of the millions of fan records you have in your CRM systems, in your marketing automation systems. Think of all the data you collect from ticketing, that you collect from merchandising, from retail, that you collect from the events and campaigns that you run, from the concessions shown on the concession stands. All that information is the rich detail that you can assimilate and you already have. But rather than keeping it as a shallow, faceless record in your data assets, you need to know more about who people really are. So our philosophy on the aspect of truly understanding the fan is you don't want to listen to fans just when they talk about you as a, as a team. You want to listen to them all the time. It's not just when they retweet Manchester City that Manchester City needs to know about them. You need to know about it when they drink Starbucks coffee down the road as well. You want to help your sponsors build those connections. Facebook was here uh, two sessions ago, really great session. And uh, the key takeaway that I took about was understanding your audience. When you're trying to connect to a global audience in Malaysia, how do you connect to that global audience? If you try to do a one-size-fits-all spray-and-pray method, you will not reach out to the right people in Malaysia, in EMEA, in South Africa. You need to have that connection. So at Zoom, what we target is getting this profile on fans and consumers and telling it everything about who they are, what they are, what they care about, where are they. And we offer a full data solution that's built on two perspectives. The left side, what we call our audience database, is an index of fan profiles that touches in, into demographic data. This covers like, things like gender, ethnicity, languages spoken. We get into spatial or location-based data. We get into psychographic information. These are beliefs, values, opinions, affiliations to teams, affiliations to entertainers. And this is a slowly changing data set that gets refreshed on a cadence of about every three months. We have about 250 million social identities indexed in our audience data set, uh, which grows about 5 million every week. So why is this important? Earlier we talked about relevance and timeliness. This drives the relevance part. And what's great about it is you can connect all these different data points to construct very rich profiles of who your audiences are and build these bio profiles and start engaging and targeting them. Coming to the, the right side, this is more about the timeliness part that we talked about. You want to know the right time to nurture your fans. You want to know when purchase intent is highest. You want to know when they complain about security in the stadium. You want to know when they have a life-changing moment, which will be the right time to reach out to them. So this is all about real time, how you can connect with people, when you can connect with people. And this is push notifications that we can send to systems with our, our capability. So what's powerful of, 
about our data philosophy is taking the left side of the picture and taking the right side of the picture and giving you this full picture of who your fans really are. So uh, um, this obviously is a very challenging task. And the way we tackle this problem to isolate 250 million social identities has been over a three-year period, we have dissected over 100 billion social signals. By these social signals, I mean activities that people talk about, locations that they have checked in from, talks about relationships, the social graph of how people are connected. Also, what do they talk about in that connection as well? Who do people follow? Who follows both Arsenal and the LA Clippers? All that is data that we index and isolate in our uh, data solution. And across all these so, uh, social identities, we have indexed them across 190 data dimensions. And all these can be combined with very complex Boolean logic to isolate exactly who are you trying to reach. So I uh, wanted to share a couple of case studies with you. The first case study is from the NBA. Uh, we work with a lot of NBA teams. Uh, this specific team uh, has a goal of maximizing the relationships they have with their most valuable fans. Who are the most valuable fans? The season ticket holders, the fans who spend the most. And they have isolated that uh, data asset. But they want to build more personalized experiences towards this community. And they do that by looking up who they are on social, which uh, we have a service that provides that. And they got a 38% match rate on their MVP fan based on social. The next step that they do for that community is enriching that in their Microsoft Dynamics system with 11 data dimensions that they care about across all the 190 points that we collect, and then assimilate those data points back into Microsoft Dynamics. Now, from an outbound marketing perspective, they can segment their audiences the right way. They can discover the lookalike audiences in order to attract and grow the community beyond the group that they have right now. They can attract more of the same type of, of MVP fans as well. And they also find better ways of engaging with that community. They have the right data points in order to push the right messages in a very programmatic way to connect the right message to the right people. So uh, the second case study I have for you uh, is with Wasserman. So for those of you who are not familiar with Wasserman, uh, it's a, a sports marketing agency with a unique focus on targeting athletes, targeting properties, targeting sponsors as well. So with that trifecta, they're trying to build the right connections and relationships between those three entities. and. Uh, we are their social media partner for providing all data on those three entities for Wasserman. They use this uh, for a variety of different use cases. Uh, this is one specific uh, example that they, they tapped into us for a global beer company that is looking to expand into third world markets. So third world markets in this specific case was Eastern and Western Africa. And the beer company was looking to identify a retired EPL football star who could be the face of the brand in these markets. How do you do that? How do you pick the right person? So uh, the solution that was done was Wasserman tapped into Zoom's hyperlocal data. So we were able to map 37,000 football fans in these very specific regional markets. Think about the global appeal on how you can expand football universally, but getting down to very granular data in Africa, in uh, Southeast Asia, every other country. So we have the data down to that grain. And they were able to map these profiles, segment it by af affinity towards these EPL stars. They were also able to segment it by characteristics of the audience in terms of the, the likelihood that they would drink beer, the likelihood they'll be socially active. Using that, Wasserman ran a multivariate analysis, and they stack-ranked the appeal of 12 football stars, 
and they use that as a way to find the ideal face of the campaign that will create the most resonance when they go into these new markets. So um, just want to share a testimonial from uh, Shelley at Wasserman. Uh, this was, we work with Shelley on a variety of different projects. Shelley's background is in consumer insights for PepsiCo. She was responsible for building their data warehouse uh, at, across the entire North American consumer segment. And she's now doing the same thing for sports at Wasserman. And what she taps into every single day is the next level deep insight that Zoom provides her, which is then integrated into a variety of different sources from broadcast media and other sources as well. But from social media, we support Shelly in her goal to provide that relevance of connecting brands to properties to uh, athletes or talents as well. So uh, I'd like to open it up for questions for either myself or Quinton. Anyone? Yes, please. You got a mic. Hi, my name is uh, Yogesh Joshi from Matchworld. Um, you have some very relevant data, very interesting data that uh, clubs, uh, franchises can pick up. However, just wanted to know what would the source of the data be and what are the uh, limitations you have in terms of, you know, if it's things like Facebook or Twitter. Absolutely. You know, you know, do you have the rights to pick up that? Who owns that data, et cetera? Just elaborate. Absolutely, yes. Uh, great question. So uh, uh, two parts of the question. The first part, what data are we sourcing? Uh, it is social information. So we pull data from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Google+. I just learned that Google Plus is very popular in Australia. So in case any of you are marketing Australia, something they should know about. Um, and uh, we connect information across all those sources to build the insights that we have. We are actually a data agnostic platform. So if there's any custom data that you would like to uh, pull through our systems, we can do that as well. Everything we do is via APIs. Uh, both Facebook and Twitter are paying customers of Zoom as well. So they use our platform too. We, uh, we have. We don't scrape anything. We don't pull any private data into our system. Everything is public information, which leads to the second question you were asking about who owns the data. So um, it's, it's, it, that's a very critical part, and that's part of the system and processes you need to establish when integrating this information into your first party data. You need to set up processes by which you can request and acquire consent and uh, so f let's assume that you have a data asset of about 10 million fans in a team that you have. Uh, push out a message requesting consent. That can be hosted by what we call a Zoom microsite, which is a form-based system by which you can have people authenticate with messaging on why you'd want to authenticate, what's the value proposition that the fan would get by agreeing to be, uh, to be researched on social media for the benefit of creating more personalized experiences. And when you have that consent, this process obviously would be done for that segment. So we work with uh, a CPG brand, which is global uh, across over 100 different countries. I'm not allowed to name it, but they do exactly that in the UK market, where they request for consent, and only for the people who have provided that consent can they uh, integrate this data solution in there. So it's, it's part of the whole uh, solution that needs to be constructed. Does that answer your question? Thomas, you might want to mention like our proprietary, you know, methods. Yeah, absolutely, yes. So Quinton uh, just brought up a good, good point here. So just to argument the first part of the question about the data sets that we have. So we have a patented enrichment pipeline, and that's my specialty. I have a background in linguistics, and my focus area is how you can assimilate structured and unstructured data uh, solutions together to create more value. By itself, unstructured data can only take you so far. But we index about 250,000 different brands, celebrities, entertainment shows globally. And we use that to construct this very rich association profile. So it's not just about getting the data from the platforms. Uh, the complexity also comes in how we enrich that data through our platform. Any more questions? Yes. Hi. Yeah, it's uh, Steve Miller from Avery Denison. Um, the information that you're gathering and disseminating is ultimately leading up to help a brand or a club 
uh, help to target a specific consumer yes. uh, in a more enriched way. Um, that's leading up to it. So let's say if I'm a marketing company or a, a marketing person from a club and I initiate a campaign based on the data that you supplied, yes. do you then supply the data to monitor the effectiveness of that campaign afterwards to s justify the information that you're bringing to the table is correct? Absolutely. So uh, we are a fully baked uh, platform that supports the monitoring aspect as well. Again, from social channels. So we have a focus on social. So we can, uh, we can track the impact and the resonance of that campaign on social and use it to, to calculate an ROI, for example, if that's your question. So to give you an example on that, um, uh, we recently worked with a publication brand, which is 140 years old. They are struggling to reach the young audience of today. And uh, they define their buyer profile as the globally curious. Their buyer profile is uh, people who care about current world issues like water scarcity, women's rights, and all those kind of new age topics. I'm uh, uh, not new age topics, more uh, topics that the people who are uh, who care about current affairs and world international uh, issues will will research. So they use Zoom to define that buyer profile. They use that to study what is the behaviors of that buyer community. For example, on a weekday versus a weekend in San Francisco. If they want to set up a, f a physical activation in San Francisco to target the globally curious, where would they put it? Is it going to be on Fisherman's Wharf? Because then you might just get a lot of tourists. You may not get the globally curious audience. So they were able to baseline it and compare it and, and isolate that. But then the key part would be the measurement aspect of tracking. When you actually set up that activation, how much uh, amplification is that campaign getting? to reflect the investment that you're put into. So absolutely, yes, we do that. Questions? Yes. Uh, Archie from InCrowd. Uh, what, what's the most useful um, first party data set uh, for clubs or um, leagues to collect if they want to match it to the data sets that you can aggregate? Absolutely. So um, there are multiple of them. So one of the is obviously the ticketing data. Uh, there is also merchandising data. There is concession data. There are also event and campaign information you might have collected. One problem that we have seen is that when you get into a lot of teams, teams wouldn't have consolidated that information into a single point. They might have it siloed in different systems. Uh, in terms of a path of moving, uh, we feel that the immediate value would be based on things like ticketing data, like the N N NBA team we talked about, starting with that uh, from CRM and matching it, enriching, potentially even bringing it into your fan warehouses that you might have for driving insights as well. But, but is it email address, name, postcode, which actual... Oh, I see, the attributes, yeah. yeah. So um, we have... As part of an API that we offer, it's called a social matching API. What that does is we take first party data like first name, last name, email address, physical address, including postcode. Uh, we don't save any of that information, but we use it as a way to drive what we call attributional or fuzzy matching. So we take those characteristics and match it up against our index of profiles, and we see that these people are very, the most likely to be the same person that you have in your CRM system. And um, it, it is a very interesting approach in that you can tap into a lot of aspects in the social graph. So for example, if uh, you follow Man City, for example, and your name is uh, John Smith, uh, now there are going to be tons of John Smiths on social media. How do you know it's the right John Smith? So you can tap into aspects of where does John Smith tweet from? Does he tweet from the Etihad complex because he was there at a game at some point? You can also see, does he follow Man City on Instagram or Twitter? And based on the social graph as well, you're basically peeling out an onion and figuring out across multiple data dimensions, this is the most likely match of the people that you have. And so which data sets are the most useful then for that? So if, if you're trying to speed that match up and make it most relevant, it, which are the most useful data sets? All of sets? them. So the, the way we work is the more data dimensions you provide, the more confident we can provide a match. We are never going to give you a match based on name alone because that's never good enough. So we care about name, we care about geography, we care about uh, brand affinity and associations, maybe to stars on the team or to the team itself. We care about uh, maybe relationships to 
sponsors maybe they ran campaigns against, and that's how the data point came in. So the more information you have collected in your first party data, the more that you can pass to Zoom, we can provide you a higher confidence of a match. Thanks. OK, so uh, just a quick last thing. Um, we are at booth 124, just outside on the right, uh, on the left when you step out. If you want to swing by, we can walk you through uh, a report of who's in your audience live, and we can give you that report as well. So thank you very much, and thanks for coming today.